All right, AP Chem, I'm going to do some work with Planck's problems with you. And like I said, these are two variable problems, so they're not difficult, but the challenging thing can be the units. So let's start right away with number one. How many nanometers are in centimeters? So there's a few conversion factors that you should know. You can go straight from centimeters to nanometers, but learning all of those conversion factors can be difficult. What you definitely do need to know is that, let's do centimeters. I can go to meters first. There's 100 centimeters in a meter. And then I can go from meters to nanometers, which is nine. So it would be over seven for centimeters to nanometers. So it's one, I mean, 201. And then we're going to go and add five zeros. You expect your answer to be a bigger number for smaller units. Nanometers is smaller units, so we expect a bigger number, which would we did see. So let's go to problems. What is the frequency of light with a wavelength of 410 nanometers? So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to see frequency is this variable. This is frequency. And so we're looking for something with frequency and wavelength. So it's related to each other by the speed of light, which is a constant. So we're going to say, let's solve for frequency. So frequency is equal to the speed of light divided by the wavelength. Speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. And we're going to put wavelength on the bottom, which is 410 nanometers. Now, I can't cancel out meters with nanometers, but I can put nanometers up here and meters on the bottom. One meter is one times 10 to the ninth nanometers. Like such. So now my meters cancel out, my nanometers cancel out, and I'm left with units of seconds on the bottom which is the same as hertz. Hertz is one over seconds, meaning there's no units on the top. And that's how we measure frequency. So the frequency to two sig figs would be 7.3 times 10 to the 14th per second. That means a wave of light comes by at a rate of 7.3 times 10 to the 14th waves per second. So now we're going to use this formula where we're solving for energy, where we're given the frequency. So energy is going to equal Planck's constant, which is given to us at 6.6 3 times 10 to the minus 34 joules on the top and hertz on the bottom. Now a hertz is the same as 1 over seconds, just so you know. So this is actually the same as joules over hertz is the same as joules times seconds. Getting used to being comfortable with these units is important for these problems. It's the only thing that matters for these problems. 
And then we're going to multiply that by 4.31 times 10 to the 14th hertz. My hertz cancels out, and I get an energy unit of joules, which is what I would expect to see for an energy unit. So when you're multiplying this in your calculator, make sure you're using the exponent function. If you don't know how to use the exponent function, that'd be a good one to ask. So the energy of one piece of light or one quantum of light we expect to be very small. Two three sig figs is 2.86 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Let's do one more where we solve for the frequency. I mean, uh, the wavelength when we're given the frequencies. So now we've got wavelength. that we're solving for, and we're given frequency. In hertz, or one over seconds. So this is the same thing. Hertz on the top is the same as seconds on the bottom. So I go to my formulas up at the top, and I want to find one that has wavelength and frequency. And we see, again, we'll use the one that relates them by the speed of light. So I'm going to rearrange this equation to solve for wavelength. So wavelength is going to equal the speed of light over the frequency. So 3 times 10 to the eighth meters per second on the top, and then the frequency of 6.62 times 10 to the 14th. Now having seconds on the bottom of the bottom really puts it back up to the top, like such. Now my seconds will cancel out, and I get 4.53 times 10 to the minus 7 meters. Now, if you wanted to convert that to nanometers, which is what we usually have wavelengths of visible light in, it's 4.53 nanometers. Next one. A certain violet light has a wavelength of 413 nanometers. What is its frequency? This time we're solving using the same formula, but we're solving for frequency. So frequency in this case will be the speed of light over the wavelength. Now the speed of light is given to you in meters per second and the wavelength is given to you in nanometers. So you can convert either way because the units of length are gonna cancel out anyway. So speed of light goes on the top, which is 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. And the wavelength goes on the bottom of 413 nanometers. There's 10 to the ninth nanometers in one meter. So you can get good at these conversion factors, and you don't always have to use the conversion factor every single time. So in my calculator, I'm going to use the exponent function. So it would be 3 exponent 8 times 1 exponent 9, and then I'm going to divide it by 413. And I'm going to get a frequency of 7.26. To three sig figs times 10 to the 14th per second. That's how many waves will come by per second. I also worked out the rest of the additional problems, but um, so you can see the answers and how to 
you can pause this and check them out without him to sit through each one of them because they're very similar. Except for number nine. Let's talk real quick about number nine. Number nine asks us for the energy given the wavelength. So what I did was I took my two formulas and I combined them. So energy equals Planck's constant times frequency. But frequency is equal to the speed of light over the wavelength. So I combined the two equations and solved it that way. You could also do it as two um, separate problems and use the frequency that you get from the first calculation. But in, this is what it would look like when you combine the two equations together.